The thing about the warp tour is that it starts at about 11 or 12 o'clock in the morning, and uh, being a, a band that had to travel in a van, we wouldn't leave until after the show was over, so we wouldn't actually leave until like 10 or 11 o'clock at night, drive all night to the next venue, sleep in the van for a few hours, and at 11 o'clock in the morning the music would start. We got no sleep, no showers, it was the best time, we, we loved every single second of it, being out there and having the camaraderie between all the bands and the crew and the athletes and everybody that's involved. It is, it's like a gigantic traveling family. It's so hot, it's so... Pick up random people too. Yeah, you just, like all of a sudden there's all these people that just start traveling with the tour and uh, it's just such an amazing uh, experience. It's like a month goes by like that and you don't even realize it. I think the warp Tour is uh, is really cool. Like we mentioned before, for one reason in particular that they have different sty styles of music. I remember the Black Eyed Peas on tour with us that one year. And it was the most amazing thing to see a hip hop band, you know, with a real band, but for them to take breaks and every other song and do their dances. And that were so cool and it was so rootsy. And, and uh, one of the things that we all agreed and thought was so cool about the Black Eyed Peas and a lot of hip hop is that it's similarities similarities with punk rock. I think are it's almost completely parallel. It's just from two different sides of uh, the city, probably you know. And uh, it just made sense to have hip hop on that tour. And I think they were uh, they were out there with like I think Eminem was out there and yeah. Ice T the same year. But they stuck out like a sore thumb because they played their instruments. Yeah, it was awesome. We sat there every day watching them play. Taking back Sunday, we just actually uh, finished a month long tour with them on the bill. They're really cool guys. I think they're headlining the Warp Tour this year that's coming out. I'm just excited for them to be seen by more and more people. I think Aren't you going to make a video with them? Am I, what do you mean? Aren't you going to direct a video with them? No, no. I, oh. I asked them though. I said, hey, let me direct a video for you guys sometime and they ran. <laughs> he tried to direct a video. <laughs> I tried, but I had no budget or okay from the band, so uh, it didn't really work out. I, I really believe in those guys. I think they're, I think that they're uh, hey. songwriters. Hey, look at me. I'm looking at you. Look at me. Talk about the support. Yeah, you see, you see what a handsome guy like Mark is like wearing this shit and you know the band's taking off. One of the coolest things about the Warp Tour is just the fact that everyone works on it together. There's no ego. Like bands that have done it before and gone through and gotten big come back and do the Warp Tour because it's fun, because it goes back to what music is really all about, about going out there and playing and getting exposed to new stuff and seeing new things and the athletes. And uh, it's funny because when a band comes out there and has some crazy ego about themselves, they get pushed aside so quickly. It's really just about going out there and making it happen for the kids that come to the show. So it's, it's really cool. You know what you should do? Go to the merch booth and offer a Gatorade or a nice cold beverage of your choice to the people selling t-shirts. Yeah, that is, that's is—that's probably one of the hardest jobs on the Warp Tour is, and uh, most underappreciated is the people that sell the t-shirts all day long and have to sit in the sun underneath one of those tents for 10 or 12 hours at a stretch. It's, it's pretty, uh, pretty rough out there. So be nice to them, buy a lot of t-shirts from the bands, and, uh, and bring them nice cold beverages. Uh -huh. Music. I mean, there's so many great bands that tour, and so many, like, I don't know, just there's always some kind of new experience to be a part of. There's uh, sports, there's motocross, there's skateboarding, BMX, and most importantly, there's different um, styles of music. You know what's the coolest thing about Eminem? was I think we were watching kind of history in the making and I think half the kids there didn't realize what he was or what he was all about so they kind of stood there and studied him. Or and what I, he was going to be, everyone yeah. didn't really take him seriously. I think that's the coolest thing is now he's complete legend and one of the greatest lyricists of all time and I and it's cool to watch that, watch history kind of unfold and see that in, in its beginning stages. And he said like that was the first uh, live shows he ever did was Warp Tour. Was it really? Yeah, it's pretty exciting. I remember that's on that tour also he was going, he was playing Warp Tour during the day and then he'd go out and like uh, play hip Club, huh? perform at a club at night so uh, he was doing double duty that whole tour and he was super cool he was yeah. super fun on that tour we're all huge Deftones fans I remember watching the Deftones I remember a show specifically where somewhere outside of Boston it was like raining and they came out and Chino just 
dances back and forth and then I was kind of watching, that was the first day I really watched him and it was like really mellow and kind of spacey and all of a sudden everything kind of kicked in and he just leaped like 10 feet in the air into the crowd and just started screaming. I was like, this is like, I've never really seen anything like that before because I wasn't in that kind of music at that time. And uh, They're like the bad brains of our generation. Yeah, right? there's something about them that kind of started a lot of stuff I think that a lot of people don't give them credit for even though they are a big band. A lot of the fans do for sure, you know, I don't mean to have that sound weird or whatever. I just think that I think that that they band played, like be metal in like a punk rock kind of way. Yeah. Like as pretty as it was sometimes and it would get as ugly as it could possibly be and he would scream, you know, like he was hurting it was wrath. Another great warp tour band, The Living End from Australia. Amazing, amazing musicians. He can play guitar like I've never seen anybody play guitar. He's the new Brian guitar. Setzer. Yeah. Completely. And also we were on tour. He actually passed out of heat stroke in the Warped Tour one time. I had to go to the hospital because he was rocking so hard and it was so hot. It was probably 110 degrees outside with crazy hum uh, humidity. There's bands that are really good that deserve to be big and there's bands that not only deserve to be big but deserve to have the notoriety of being of being great, great musicians. And I think the Living End are, are that. They've been around for the longest time. We've toured with them. Back in the day when Blink was first starting in Australia, we toured with them on the Warp Tour. Um, they're great friends of ours, but they're absolutely an amazing band. And uh, we're all huge fans of them, and everybody needs to go by their record and know about them uh, for real, and they will, will not be let down. For everybody out there that's going to the Warp Tour this summer, as you should, you can check this for yourself. On the way out, look at how sunburned everybody that went to the show that day is going to be. Make sure you bring your sunblock. That's one thing that you need to make sure that uh, you bring. Because there are some people that, uh, that are going to be peeling for a long time after every show. And possibly ibuprofen for the kids out in the hot sun. The headache will usually hit around 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And uh, you'll see some kids pass down the dirt by the end of the day. Kevin Lyman and Daryl Eaton, all the people that put together the Warp Tour do it because they love it. It's so much work for them. It's so hard. The people don't even know the amount of love and care that the people well, that are part of this tour put into it to make this happen. Because kids are funny too. We showed up at the Warp Tour on one of our tours. And Sum 41 was on the whole tour, and I remember running into our old friends from No Effects and Lag. Well, actually, No Effects wasn't on that tour. It was the Me First and the Gimme Gimme. So Fat Mike and the guys from the Vandals were all talking about the Sum 41 kids, how they're so entertaining and. Uh, it's cool they fit in. I think they fit in perfectly with that crowd, you know, and I and I think they will become veterans of that scene, that's for sure. Probably one of the best bands of Warped Tour. Yeah, definitely. Would have to be Rancid. Did we ever tour on the Warped Tour with Rancid or we just see them at the show? They were at some of the shows. I remember the year that we did it, I remember that was the first time I really met Tim. I was like, yo, I'm Tim from Rancid. And I was like, uh, I don't even think, I think they just played a couple shows with us. That band is so good. I think they're the one band that's, that's kind of been veterans of the Warped Tour. They're so professional, but they're so sincere and genuine with their style of music. I remember um, when we were recording our very, very, very first record ever. We were driving around in your red truck, and all we listened to every day after we recorded when we were driving around Los Angeles was Rancid. The definite yeah. heroes of ours, and yeah. uh, definitely a Warped Tour institution. Uh, uh, Warped Tour, we actually got to travel. We rented space on the, the uh, production bus. We had three bunks on the production bus. There's a lot of camaraderie, and uh, it's like a traveling circus, but you never get bored, ever. And most importantly, there's different um, styles of music. Yo, know, Cypress Hill should definitely do the Warp Tour. I think that band, out of almost any hip hop band I've ever seen, makes so much sense with rock bands for some reason. There's something about the beats and the way their show is and the way their songs are arranged that it just completely makes sense with rock music, I think, especially punk rock stuff. Yeah, it's they can appeal edge. to any audience, you know? And it's like a sense of rebellion when Be Real and Send Dog start, you know, talking. <laughs> It's hard. It's hard. It's heavy, and it's like it's so good. It makes sense. It's and they're cool. legends. They've been around forever. They're my. They're by far my favorite hip hop act I've ever seen live. We got a lot of uh, things. Is being able to sit on the stage and watch every band throughout. The, there's not. You're never bored. 
you always have a band to watch and you always can go sit on the stage and watch them play. Alkaline Trio, um, an amazing band. Matt writes some of the best lyrics I've ever heard in my life. And uh, he is a total poet. They're a, a great band. They write great songs. But they're one of those bands of the Warp Tour that uh, it's a little strange to watch Alkaline Trio play during the day. You know? Oh, absolutely. Like they're, they're like a band you want to watch at like midnight or two in the morning. And, and it has uh, to be Halloween. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah. Actually, when we heard Alkaline Trio for the first time on our last record, I rewrote like three songs because his words were so good and inspired me to go back and rethink what I was writing about and how I was writing about it. Alkaline Trio, I think, is like a... It's like the Paul Westenberg of yeah. Yeah. Like our generation. Yeah, completely. He totally is. That's a perfect example. On the Warp Tour, there's different ways. Many bands have record labels that submit them. Many bands have agents that submit them. And then there's the way that you go on the internet and ask me how to get a hold of me and I have you send in a submission. I remember sitting on the Warp Tour in Europe with uh, Fletcher from Pennywise and Kevin Lyman and uh, Fletcher turns to the Kevin and Kevin runs and owns the Warp Tour. He goes, Fletcher goes, so Kevin, are you going to book these guys on next tour? And Kevin kind of smiles and shies away from the question. You can't take it for granted that you're just going to get on the Warp Tour. And Fletcher goes, not only do you have to book these guys on the next tour, because he's a really huge big guy and he ba basically will beat you up and eat you if you don't do what he says. He goes, not only do you have to book them next uh, next tour, I'm going to take $500 out of my pocket and pay every single day for part of their guarantee because these guys are going to are gonna be huge. And I'm sitting there and I feel real stupid, but then Kevin looks and he goes, oh, and Fletcher goes, he pulls out a piece of paper and sticks it down in front of Kevin. He's like, you're signing your name right now and you're booking these guys. Well... We ended up not playing that tour because our band started selling records and we had to halt these different things that we had to do. But I remember it, it as being like kind of a sign of the camaraderie and, and the brotherhood that kind of exists on that tour. And uh, it, was, it was such a cool feeling because Pennywise, they were like legends to us and they did so much for our band. And, uh, and Fletcher, if he wasn't throwing his urine on you and making you eat dog feces, he was doing something like that to make sure that your band had success the next year around.